Welcome to the Creation Evaluation Station. On this episode, we are going to be evaluating Jurassic Lego Jurassic World Gallimimus and Pterodon Breakout. Um, not familiar with my channel here, I do in depth reviews of models and construction sets, uh, mostly Lego, sometimes other products as well. Um, I also do reviews and discussions of other creative works, such as movies, cartoons, and video games. Now, because they are in-depth reviews, uh, they tend to be long, so make sure you're using the uh, timestamps down below on the red bar and in the description below. Um, if you're on a PC, or if you click on the red bar, it'll also show up here on your left. Uh, that'd be your right. <laughs> um, so they can help you navigate to see the stuff you want to see more, or you can use them for bookmarks if you don't have time to watch the whole thing. Yeah. And can get back to it at a later date. Now, back to this. Take a look at this. I'm really excited for this set. I've wa I wanted it. It was like on my Christmas list and everything. Um, I think the vehicle looks really cool. It does some really cool things. It wasn't because of the dinosaurs. Although I believe this is the only set that has the Gallimimus in it. Um, I could be wrong about that though. Uh, but yeah. So, check out these stats. It's uh, set number 75940. It's 7 plus for ages 7 and up. Uh, it has 391 pieces. And it has been discontinued, but originally de retailed for, yes, $49.99. Um, this recently got discontinued, like, it was around at Christmas time. I think it discontinued in January. Um, so you may find it in stores if you look hard enough. But, and maybe even on clearance if you look hard enough. Uh, I'm no guarantees on that. The Lego store no longer has it. Um, you probably have to go to the secondary market, you know, eBay, stuff like that. Um, to find it. Uh, I'm really excited. I got it. I'm finally getting to get to put it together with this video. I didn't have time before. That's why most of my Lego sets are not put together. And But we'll be looking at all of them. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited for this. I like the vehicle. Pretty cool. Um, there's like one other vehicle I really wanted. I didn't get it. It's an older even older than this um it, it carried a it was like a t-rex carrier vehicle a really big one um that one was kind of cool i never got that one Let's see if yeah have to find out maybe how if i can find it online don't like looking at those prices but maybe that one was a less desirable you never know but anyways let's go put this together here we have the contents of the box, and we have one, two instruction booklet, one really thin one, one much thicker. Still don't know why they can't just put all these in one, and why they have the different sizes. But we also have a sticker sheet here, and it's got, mm, like, not too many, but a good amount, just the same. We have bag one. Bag two, that's like two there, there it goes, and bag three. Along with that, we have parts of a bag dinosaur. And there's more, because we have some big rubber tires. They are rubber. So, let's open them up and see what each bag has. Here we have the uh, 
contents of bag one plus. We've got uh, big old tires that were in there loose. And parts for the dyno that was in the bags. The other bags. And the rest of it is in bag one. Now this pteranodon's in bag one, which I found not interesting to actually package them dyno with the parts for once. We got some bricks in here. A few plates, not too many. We have one of our characters. Some dragon or er, uh, dino eggs. We have a ton of these steering wheel pieces, which likely are going to be part of the drones. We've got some transparent orange pieces. It's interesting. We have transparent bright orange and transparent regular orange. Neon orange, whatever you want to call it. We also have, ta-da, some amber. So you can, you too can farm your own dino DNA. And we got some trans green pieces for windows. Cool. <laughs> Excuse me. So here we have a bag of two. Got a good array of parts, plates, and bricks and other assorted pieces. Very gray color scheme we got going here. Though we do have some nice transparent colors. There's red. Oh, yeah, and there's a print here. Got some trans orange. We got some nice aqua green color there. Although we did over here too. It's kind of weird. Uh, maybe they're uh, seat pieces or something. And I believe that's Owen. We have one of our figures. And uh, definitely have a lot of the studs on side pieces in this bag. Here we have a bag three, the last and final bag. And to start off, we have this little box. I'm not going to open it yet, but it's got the net in it because there's a net blaster in here, which is over here. And that last bag. May have been very drab with grays and blacks, but we have a lot of color here. Still some more grays and black, but then here's yellow. Here's a blue windscreen. We got yellow hubs. We got the yellow crate. Trench color for a crate. Let's see where how it plays into this. Orange pieces, more aqua pieces, nice bright blue pieces, mostly plates and things. Then on to the smaller stuff. You got these probably covering the wheels. Yeah. Um, more colorful stuff here. No transparent pieces in this one though. And we have Claire Deerming in here. Um, yeah, that is the last bag. We can now finish this up. Here are our leftover pieces from this set. Nothing too remarkable. Extra syringes, a lot of dots, and one single stud size pieces. And we also have this jaw. This is about the only thing interesting, although pretty useless. Now, I think this is the same jaw that they used for that Tross Raptor. Uh, we'll find out in a moment. I'm going to go get my spare parts and see if I can find the other spare jaws and com just compare them. Is indeed the same piece. So the new Atrociraptors, which this is the albino one's extra part, um, ghost I think they call them, um, is exactly the same piece. Um, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with all these extra jaws, but I have them. We have our cast of characters here, and introduce you. Here we have uh, Clara Dearly. We have Owen Grady, and this guy is called an ACU Trooper. He looks like just your standard dress park guard, I guess, but that's what they call him, ACU Trooper. Um, now, let's just take some things off here so we can see things clear. They're not too many. Boing! Boing! And we're done. Ah. 
definitely have opacity issues here and here. Um, I mean, he, him, I was like, oh, well, no, he's got a shirt on there. That's the same color as the shirt. Uh, like, wait a minute. No, the shirt's there. That's the color of the shirt. And yeah, that is almost the same color as that, <laughs> the shirt. Uh, and it's, so it's supposed to be flesh tone and doesn't quite match. Just a little bit darker from the orangish brown underneath. And her green is definitely showing through with hers. This guy looks good, though. He doesn't have any <laughs> necks exposed or anything. Um, I like the leg printing here. We got a pocket there, straps, some holes. I don't know what's supposed to be there. Um, nice metallic paint, just like Owen's chest there with his, mm, I don't know, smoke container containers there. Um, I like the, the headset piece. They're not piece, it's a painted print. There we go. Headset print for the ACU Trooper. Now, uh, looking on the back, scary face, smiley face. I guess he was scowling on the front. Uh, but, uh, and then the ACU Trooper. Does not have a second face because all he gets is a cap, so his face would be exposed. Um, as far as the backs go, they look fairly nice, pretty standard here. Um, same with the uh, Owen, except we got that nice strap for the, his canisters that he's carrying. But the guard's got that nice silver Jurassic World symbol on there, plus all those little bat uh, pockets and stuff pretty nice looking so only printing on legs is this guy except for his oh no one's got a bit on his as well uh, but yeah they look pretty nice just got uh, some minor uh, um, opacity issues let's look at the pterodactyl first trying it on um I really like this green color scheme, although it is a bit odd considering these guys were probably cliff dwellers. I would suggest they either should be brown or blue to blend in with the sky, not green. Um, green would be more for uh, like canopy dwellers. And this guy was probably a little too big for the canopy. Um, but it's still nice looking, nice to look at. Uh, especially with his dual molding looks really nice blends well into the The back here and the coloring and the rest of them which the the paint the face is really nice And th this is made of rubber and it, but it's also painted on I Don't know how well. I mean it looks like it holds the paint really well, but uh, I'm kind of curious how it would hold up in time um, but paint job on that face is definitely nice looking. Look at that eye. He's staring at you. Um, proposed ability. We can open and close his jaw. Now we can pull his deck down so he can go like this, but it's not really suggested because his jaw comes loose. It, it's not really meant to do that. Um... It's meant to be up straight like this, and you can open and close like that. That's how it's supposed to be done. And then the wings got flappy, flappy action. On his back, we have two by two studs. On his other side, we have a one by two anti studs. Well, that can be considered an anti stud there, or just room for an extra stud. Um, his back feet are hooks, so he can cling on to tree branches or something that has the uh, minifigure pole or rod um, that can be held and that he doesn't have much posability you can kind of have him stand up if you do this and this is where you kind of want to put his neck down a little bit um, like I said, it's not really supposed to be that way. And that's why it wants to go back up. Because the, 
the lower jaw does does is not supposed to move. But uh, he does look a little awkward looking up at the hair like that. Well, it's not too bad, but still would look better if he can bend his neck forward. On to the Gallimimus. Now, I believe this is the only set with Gallimimus in. I will have to look up for sure, but really, there isn't a lot that makes this Gallimimus different from some of the other dinosaurs. It's got the raptor body. It's got the uh, Dilophosaurus legs. It's also, I think, these arms have gone on uh, one particular Dilophosaurus uh, have been used for the Dilophosaurus as well um, and the blower jaw here I believe has been used on the Dilophosaurus it's been used for other dinosaurs as well so the only really unique thing you have going on here is his neck very surprising um, but he still, you know, he looks good. And as far as posability, open, shut jaw. Oh, and despite his tiny head, there's some really nice paint job on those eyes. The other side there as well. Whoop. There's looking at you, kid. Um, like I said, he rotates his neck. And he's got some striping down the back as well. Arms move. They do not grip onto things. Legs move up and down. And they have anti-studs on the bottom. And we have a 2x2 two two studs on his back. His tail does not bend, although it's made of rubber. It does have a rubber extension somewhere in here. It becomes rubber. There it is. Ooh, sorry. And, uh, but yeah, it's got a rubber tail for, you know, protected play. He stabs an eye out very easily. And, uh, yeah, there he is. He looks pretty good. We've got everything here. And, uh, Pretty much looked at everything, figures, the dinos, you just have to look at the vehicle. So, we're going to push everything aside and take a closer look at the vehicle. Not too far away, because we are going to need them later. Including this. Now, here is the vehicle. It's a lot smaller than I thought it would be, but it's still a big boy. It's a chompy boy. Love these tires, and uh, back half is pretty smooth. You can have a guy, uh, you know, figures walk up on top of here. Um, and considering these little buggies here, buddies are little droids, drones that uh, can be used. You know, they'd be up there servicing. This is a antenna, communication antenna to control these. And uh, one guy has got a remote so he can control them. Um, but uh, first, actually, let's take a closer. Now, these are exactly the same. There's two of these. Um, I like the bright orange here. Just to be some kind of, you know, search light, I guess, or just to let you know that the power is on, or a camera, I suppose, although I don't know why you would have a bright orange camera like that. Um, color scheme does match the rest of the vehicle. And, uh, it's a cute little droid. Drone. And it, there's got one stud here, and you can see here it's got the one stud goes right into the, the big holes there. Not into the regular anti studs. Actually, it goes in the other one. You want it hanging right off the edge. It's nice and smooth there. Because this is a slopes down, so if you put it here, it's going to overhang and easily pop off like that. Which I apparently did it wrong before. But if you put it to the other edge, it, it sits flush with the edge. 
there's no overhang that can make it easier to knock off. Not that it's still not easy to detach because it is only one stick. <clears throat> now, while we're back here, let's check this out. Look at this. Doing. Yes, the back half opens up, and inside we've got some train guts here stored away. Um, but this little jobby here opens up. We've got nice handles here. So you can open up, and you got some eggs incubating, and you got a uh, cold syringe, something that needs to be chilled, some amber, fire extinguisher in case there's a fire. But yeah, you have this little tiny lab, or whatever you want to call it, that, that hangs out there. You can still drive the vehicle around, if you like. It makes it a lot lighter. Uh, look at him, Papa Wheelie. Yes, and this thing rolls really, really well. Zoom. Oops, I knocked the drawer down. Again. Rolls too well trying to get it to stop. <laughs> now, the outside of this isn't much to look at. There's these nice little green windows here. Um, you can see the track that these connect into, and then these hooks here hook right into the vehicle to hold it in place it's really rather nice not too complicated but uh nice just the same uh we'll leave that off to the side for now it's not much more to see on the inside just flat walls there um you can see the tra inner track that those run on we got these up top we got the antenna here Moving around, we have presence of little uh, ladders here. So it looks like you can climb up there. That's how they get up there. There's a hair floating around here. Go away, hair. Hair today. Oh, I see it, but I can't grab it. Going tomorrow. Anyways, now onto the front here. Got a lovely array of headlights here. Nice bumper. We have this cockpit that opens up from the back, opens up forward like this. And inside, there's all sorts of things going on in there. Uh, let's actually turn it around here. You can see better. You got uh, control panels, a steering wheel, and there is seating in there for two characters. Now you see the one slight problem. You can see the inside wheel well of the wheel. And I think that's probably one of my problems with the front of this is there things are a little too visible. You'd be exposed to all the mud and stuff that thing kicks up while you're driving. Um, but, uh, not much you could really do about that because I think they wouldn't fit in there. They need the space for the arms. But, let's turn it back around here and I grab our two, our couple here. Let's, uh, Put uh, Claire in the back. And Owen in the front. Because Owen's always driving. Not true. But he always seems to be driving the small vehicles. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, we're just going to take them off. Because they want to keep coming off anyways. Handling. But, uh, there you go. They both fit in there. Nice and easy. Close them up, and there they are. Now, on the other side here, this fancy looking thing here comes up here and is a net launcher. Except right now it doesn't have any nets in it. Okay, so here's the net, just a little round thing, cloth, 
weave. If you want to call it. Fold it up here a little bit. And you put it in here. There it is. Let's see. Pull it up just a little bit. There you go. So we have our critter, like our pterodactyl here, flying by. And we aim and we fire and completely miss. Yeah. This thing has very little to no range. It pretty much just falls down straight in front of it. One disappointment with this, but we'll talk more about that when we give it the final eval. Uh, but once again, you can see inside there is not a solid vehicle, even though it looks big and chunky. It it really isn't. It's very deceptive. Like move this panel up, and you can see that that that, that panel is all that's really making up the bulk. Now I don't mind that. Except for the part where you can see into the, the side there where the the uh, figures are. Because it makes them look like they're going to have not a good time driving this thing. Big wheels spinning next to them. Uh, yeah, let's see. Is there anything else on it? Not really. Well, let's check the under check out the underside. Not too much spectacular there. Um, yeah. So uh, I'll show you putting this back in. Put it in. Got to line it up just right to get it to line up with the. Uh, oh, I'm putting it in backwards. That doesn't help either. Yes, clips go back in like that. And then you find the the groove, which that wasn't the groove, it's sitting on top of the groove. Where'd the groove go? Groovy man. I swear this isn't that hard to put the good in. I've done it before. <laughs> there we go. I know, I'm trying to get it line level with this, and it isn't. It's slightly raised. Um, but yeah, it clips in, and it's tight. It's not going to fall out. Um, so, got that going for you. There we go. We're getting in and out. I've made the mistake of putting it too high. So, brake lights back here. It's always nice. Makes it more realistic if you have brake lights in your vehicle. <laughs> Even if you're traipsing through a dinosaur infested jungle and you don't need them. But that's it for here. Uh, we'll go check out here, give this thing a final eval back at the desk. You know. Back here at the desk, ready to give this my overall thoughts and my final eval. So, I like this the set. I liked it when I first saw it. And fortunately, I am a little bit disappointed with it. I still like it. The, the vehicle is very unique and has a unique feature that I very much like. Um, the whole opening up of the back and making like a little uh, uh, lab or whatever. It's very neat, and I, I like that. It's one reason why I wanted this set. I mean, it looked cool to begin with, and when you look closer at the box and you find out the bag pulls out and becomes, oh, wow, that that's really neat. Um, it is a really neat-looking vehicle overall without that feature. I was expecting it to be bigger, so I was a little bit disappointed at that, including when the lab comes out. It's, it's not that big of a lab. Um, there isn't even a computer in it. <laughs> um, but it's still clever, and they've used this on other sets. And um, larger sets with the bigger... Like, I like the idea of a mobile base, or 
a large vehicle that opens up into a base. Uh, they've been doing that. There's quite a bit of different monkey kids sets where there's like that. They have the big boat that opens up and they have all the little rooms and everything else inside there. There's the spider queen giant mech spider thing. The back of that opens up. There's a base to that. I've yet to put it together, but I know that's what happens to it. But there's a lot of sets like that. And I really like that concept. I wish this was bigger and had a bigger thing but if i was doing building challenges right now i would make this building challenge i would challenge you take your your collection of legos and build a large vehicle that opens up in the back we may do that still someday but not right now uh, but yeah that's my overall thoughts, I have a few other things to say, which I will get to when I go to the uh, final eval. So, let's get to that. Uh, as far as appearance is going to go, as I said, I really like this and the look of this, and that really hasn't changed much. The dinosaurs look good, no problem there. This thing rolls good, which... You can't tell that just by looking at it, um, which I don't even know what I'm talking about rolling. That's not part of the appearance. Um, but the big chunky wheels look good, and they work good too, which that's a plus on top of the big chunky rubber wheels. Um, so it looks really good, and I gave it a 10 for appearance. Now, function... Uh, yeah, this, this is where I start to have problems with this set. I, and other than the fact that it isn't quite as big as I thought it would be. Problems with the function is just this net launcher. It just doesn't work very well. You know, you, you, you shoot it off and it pretty much... You, you lift it up, you know... Um, the only way you're going to catch is anything if it's sitting right in front of the vehicle. It flies like right here. The dinosaur runs in front of it. And I think there were a few other sets that had this net launcher. But I don't think that... Uh, I think LEGO knew that they didn't really have a really good thing going on here with the net launching. Uh, it... It's a hard thing to do because, for one, there's no weight to this net. So there's nothing to... There's no mass to throw, you know? It's going to be like trying to throw a feather. It, it, it doesn't go anywhere. It goes straight down. Um, so, yeah. Other than that, rolls good. The opening up of the back works fine. The little, you know, detachable drones look, are great, um, work great. I have this guy on. There we go. Um, cockpit works well. Uh, so, yeah, the worst part is the net launcher. Um, I would rather that put a firing you know, projectile or something there, even though a net launcher makes more sense when you're trying to capture dinosaurs rather than shoot them, but uh, I'd almost rather they, they did that. So I end up getting the uh, function a nine, and moving into the fun, well sort of has the same issue. The net launcher is not very fun. Um, the rest of it is great. The, you know, moving, opening this up, uh, like I said, it rolls well. Cockpit's great. You can put multiple characters in there. And, and you have this nice top up here where you can put the third character um, so he can get an aerial view of what's going on. Um, 
but because of that net launcher, it's also gonna get a nine. <clears throat> so, fortunately, fun's getting a nine also. Now, moving on to technique. Now, there, there's some good things here, and as you see, this this is not exactly symmetrical because the, the pilots and everything are on this side, this is on that side, and I like how it was built with that in mind. It, it's not perfectly symmetrical. And even though I don't exactly like how this isn't as bulky as it appears, because you just lift these panels up and suddenly this seems like a whole lot less. Um, I'm okay with that, and that's really neat technique to make things look more impressive than they are, because it does still look impressive, even though you can see that. And, you know, the worst part is when you, oops, <laughs> goes the other way. You open up the cockpit here, and you can see the back of the tire. But you're not going to see that all the time. Especially you can put characters in, or figures in there. They're even going to be hidden up even more. And I wouldn't say the, the technique for building the little back laboratory is amazing. But it is cleverly built into it. And the, you know, the designs for these are pretty nice. And overall, the techniques were good. And there's small things added up to, you know, this. And it's also, it was fun to build because it was quite a while before you realized what you were building. The the way the, the pieces go down. It's like, you know, sometimes with a truck or a car, you, you know what? It's going to look like not too far into the build. Um, this one, you weren't quite sure. That was kind of fun and neat. Um, and that, that had to do with techniques and stuff too. Uh, and I am giving technique a 10. So you take all that, add it up, you yeah, get 30, 38. 38, you divide that by 4, you get a 9.5. Still, you know, it's a decent set for the, you know, the, the launcher is probably the most disappointing thing of the whole thing. I was a little bit disappointed with the size, but it's still, it's not terrible. I think part of it's actually the box that had me thinking it was a bigger vehicle. I mean, it's still a big, chunky vehicle, just very compact. Um... So yeah, I gave that a 9.5. And uh, as far as the price goes, it was uh, $49.99, a $50 set. And it had 397 pieces. And you do the math, and you end up with 12 cents per piece. Now this is two cents over the standard. It's not a great price, but this is a decent set. And it's a decent set. There's dinos in it. And you also got the big rubber tires. Some of that stuff makes it cost a little bit more. And you got to figure in licensing. And at $0.12, cents, I don't really think it's a bad price. And it's a really good set as well. So I ended for, for a price grade, I ended up giving it a P for pass. Would I like to see it cheaper? Yeah, you know, 5 Five, definitely ten dollars cheaper for sure and it would be uh, a, a perfect a good price um, so that brings our overall final eval to a 9.5 P so yeah I really I really like this set but I'm slightly disappointed with it and I still challenge you to build your own thing I don't have anything set up. I hope to do that one day um, when I have more established channel and, and stuff going on. But it doesn't can't stop you from building it. Um, it inspires me to want to go build something like this. And that's one reason why I like this set. It's a problem I have with the Jurassic Park sets and, and a lot of the licensed sets is they lack inspiration. 
Now this vehicle is nowhere near any of the movies. And that's partially why I like it. I like the stuff that isn't movie related. Do I like the stuff that looks accurate to the movie? Yeah, I do, but it, they're not very inspirational. This thing gives me inspiration. And that's why I like it. It's also why I like a lot of the Marvel sets, because a lot of them aren't related to the movies, and they also inspire me to be creative and build something similar, build my own take on the thing. Um, when, when you have something that's a perfect representation, it doesn't inspire you to build a perfect representation. They've already done that. Um, so, yeah, that's what I think about this set. You guys can uh, let me know down in the comments what you think uh, overall with the Jurassic Park and the licensing lines, period. And uh, you know, like I said, I don't mind sets like this that are inspired by Jurassic Park that also inspire me to do something else. Um, and, yeah, it's great fun having some dinos to, to play with as well. Um but yeah, so if you haven't yet or you're new to this channel, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, oh, like, of course, you should probably should do that first. Like and then subscribe if you enjoyed this and uh, want to see more of my videos and notifications. Hit the, no the notification button, but also check out my links for uh, for Facebook and Twitter. I post on there as soon as I get the videos out. YouTube has a tendency to delay things. Um, so, yeah, those are available. And uh, there is a Patreon link on there. It's not active yet. I'm still in the process of working on that. But that's pretty much it for me here at the Creation Evaluation Station, reminding you that creativity is key.